Suck, Squeeze, Bang, Blow. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Edwin here at the Ottoman Garage Assonation. So on the channel today, we want to talk about the simplicity of an internal component engine. Uh, components or parts found on an engine and what they do. So on set here we have a diesel engine, Land Rover engine, 300 TDI engine, for those who know. This is um, an in-house Land Rover engine that was manufactured or made for Land Rover units. That is Land Rover Discovery 1, Range Rover Classic, and um, Land Rover Defenders, the Defender 90 and 110, up to around 2005 when Land Rover switched from this engine, the 200-300 TDIs, to TD5 and later on moved to the Ford Puma units. So we want to look at different components and what they do. Um, what you can see here, these are some of the technicians we have at the workshop. This engine has been rebuilt to factory specs uh, from a car that has not run for about 12 years. So we found a lot of issues on the engine that we decided the best option on it was just to rebuild it. So we'll just start from the um, side here. This component over here is what we call the alternator for those who know it. Um, it's one of the components that does not derive its name directly from what it does because uh, what it does is it generates electricity from the rotations of the engine to be able to power some of the electrical components on the car as well as recharge the battery on the car. So the part where it gets its name, its name as the alternator is just uh, changing or alternating from the um, alternating current to direct current that is consumed by 12 volt, 12 volts units that are fitted on cars. So alternator, its job is to um, recharge or power up uh, components on the car. Part number two, this will vary from shape, size, and manufacturer depending on uh, the type or model of cars. So here is the water pump. So as well, water pump just derives its name from the job it does. So the job of the water pump, or in other words, coolant pump, is to uh, pump around the coolant or water that is in the radiator and the expansion tank around the engine for cooling. So not much right home about the water pump. Uh, down here we have, this is just a pulley, an idler pulley that is used to tension or just um, tighten up the belt as it goes round and that brings us to the belt. So for other cars, previously this used to be known as a fan belt, but modern cars nowadays do not use um, a belt to run the fan. Instead the fan is electric. So the name fan belt sort of became obsolete but uh, people still use it. Uh, but the more correct um, name for it nowadays is just more of an auxiliary belt. Some people will call it serpentine belt because of how it coils around the pulleys and the tensioners uh, like a serpentine the snake, how a snake coils. So idler pulley just to tighten up the, um, the belt. Down here we go on to the crank pulley. So this crank pulley, as it suggested, is the pulley on the crankshaft its job is to use the rotation of the crankshaft to be able to turn all these other pulleys that are here the water pump the alternator and onto this other pulley here that is driving the camshaft so something to learn here previous makes of engines um, like these and older ones had something we call uh, did not have overhead camshaft so the camshaft is found in the engine block so right here for modern cars you would find we have a camshaft at the top of the engine over the cylinder head and more so two of them the one we call dual overhead camshaft but for these older engines you'll find it just in the block and then what you find now from the camshaft you will come and find things like this this is a push rod, so it derives its name as well from the job it does. So it is pushed by the camshaft under there, uh, under there in the block, pushed up to be able to move the um, rockers on the top of the engine. 
So the rockers here are these little lobes that will be able to control the valves through the movement on, on the lobes on the camshaft that will be able to open and close. So here, this whole unit is um, rocker arm or rocker shaft. So this entire from end to end is a rocker arm or rocker shaft. And these little lobes here are the rockers. So these are the ones responsible of opening and closing the valves depending on the movement of the camshaft and, and the lobes on the camshaft that do push this up and down. So on this other side is where you find the push rod that comes from uh, the camshaft under there. So when it is pushed up like so, it will close the valve over here. It will push down the valve, uh, actually open the valve, push it down for the valve to open. When the lobe goes down, uh, the spring here on the valve will again push it up or pull it up, which will in turn close the valve. So this component is the rocker arm, rocker shaft, and these are the rockers, and this is the push rod. The entire job of the combination of this and this is to be able to close and open valves. Now, while still here, we can look at this other components here this of course is a fuel line that goes down there to the injector pump that we will get to that later but on this we have the um, uh, injector nozzles so injector nozzles the jobs of these injector nozzles is just to inject fuel from the pump into the combustion chamber so they look something just for demonstration an injector um, nozzle will be a solid mass made of metal with jets at the bottom so the jets at the bottom through the pressure that is generated by either mechanical fuel pump or electrical fuel pump or just any other high pressure fuel pump will push the diesel or the fuel that comes in as liquid and then under the compression under the pressure comes out of the injector nozzle as just mist or vapor into the combustion chamber to be able to be compressed and ignited for power so that is the job of fuel injectors so this entire mass of metal here is what we call the engine block so the engine block is just a block of metal with um, cylinders that are bored um, at the center to be able to house pistons so pistons are uh, things like this this is a piston these are piston rings so they are bored at the center of the block so the crankshaft is at the bottom and the job of the crankshaft is to be able to move the pistons up and down the pistons for the four stroke system so four stroke system or four stroke uh, design of the internal combustion engine works this way so we have four strokes as i mentioned so first stroke is the intake stroke this is where the pistons will go down to suck in air and fuel then the second stroke when the crankshaft spins and then the pistons will come up like so that is the second stroke that would be the compression stroke so the air and fuel mixture that has been sucked into the cylinders is compressed and then the third stroke is now when they move down again that is now the combustion uh, where um, everything now blows up for diesel engines now the compression ignites the fuel air mixture and then blows up for petrol engines that's now where um, spark plugs will fire to ignite and then at the end of it now we have the fourth one which, which is the exhaust stroke so now the pistons will come up again just to push out the exhaust that has been generated from the uh, power stroke from all the combustion there and that how we get that is how we get power from an internal combustion engine now moving on to this side we can see another component here this is what we call a turbo charger now a turbo charger is um, a sort of air compressor that uses exhaust gases to spin up the turbine or the impeller and in turn suck in more air and be able to 
push more air into the um, intake manifold for more power. So turbo, this unit here, air gets in, witchcraft happens in there when it spins, and then compressed air comes out into the intake for more air to be pushed into the engine and therefore the engine would be able to burn more fuel. So more fuel, more air burn, more power the engine will produce. Moving further back, we have a starter here. Well, nothing much about the starter. Just a component, um, 12 volt or 24 volt component that is used to spin up the engine for initial startup. We have a fuel injector pump here. So for earlier cars, uh, for older engines like this and back, so we used to have um, a mechanical injector pump. So you have fuel coming from the tank through a lift pump or a smaller electric pump up to the injector pump. So you have one line of fuel coming from the tank and then we have four cylinders. So fuel needs to go into these four cylinders individually depending on uh, the time at which what cylinder is fired. So to be able to achieve that we have the injector pump that is now amplifying the pressure of the fuel that has come uh, from the tank into the individual cylinders at a specific time based on the engine revolutions and the firing order. So in modern cars that will be determined by the computer, the computer by the use of an electric pump, in-tank electric pump or um, a high pressure pump separately mounted on the engine. So the computer will determine which cylinder needs to fire when and then it will calculate the fuel air uh, ratio, mixture ratio and then be able to open up injector nozzles at a particular point. So for this one, it was all mechanical, just engine rotations and the firing order. Then we have the suction, compression, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. The first drop uh, design. Now on this side we have this particular unit here. So this is what we call the intake manifold. For you to make power, first of all you need to have um, combustion happening. So for combustion to happen, there needs to be at least three things. You need to have three things. You need to have oxygen, you need to have the fuel, and then you need to have an igniter. So for diesel engines, the ignition comes from the compression. So the fuel air mixture is compressed so highly that it ignites by itself, just for being compressed until it gets too hot, it blows up. So for air, we have an intake manifold on every internal combustion engine. So the engine needs to suck in air for oxygen to aid combustion inside the combustion chamber. So we have intake manifold that takes in uh, cold air and then we have fuel and then we have um, the compression that will ignite diesel air mixture or we have spark plugs for petrol engines. And then coming to this side we have um, it's just a basically fuel filter. You know it as sometimes called a water separator. So its job is to filter that from uh, the tank coming through the engine. So it will filter this before it gets into the injector pump. And so on and so forth. So for now, that is much we can learn from this engine. Our job is to make sure we know what you don't know and make you know. So uh, up to this far, if you watch some of our videos, you can go back and re-watch or watch new ones, um, subscribe, recommend them to a friend, make sure that you like and share. You can as well go to our um, uh, Facebook page, Ottoman. Our location is at Donholm, just opposite Oyster Village. We will be able to, we are happy to hear diagnosis, give you professional advice and just um, help sort you out with your machines. Cheers.